I try not to get bogged down too much in the distinctions of specific terminology here, because really scanning and enumerating are both very, very broad terms. They're all talking about looking around the network, identifying what hosts are there, what switches are there, what services are out on the network, what are the IP address ranges, what are the MAC addresses looking like, what kind of traffic am I seeing? So looking actually at these, but not just generically sniffing or capturing all this data, it's more along the lines of finding who's active. There's active clients here, there's active servers here. I'm starting to build a list of these things, starting to find out exactly what they are, and then build more and more detailed information about what hosts are out there and what they're doing. All of this information feeds into answer the question, what do you hack? Because you can't simply hack everything at the same time. There's no wonderful giant red button that has the word hack written on it. And when you smash it down, all the systems that are compromisable become compromised and you have administrative control and you run the company. That doesn't happen. This kind of active assessment is critical and it is a little bit slow and it's a little methodical. And I'm going to show you some techniques in a little while to hopefully speed it up or make it more efficient. But these techniques are all about finding out which hosts are active on a network, which are not active, and then for those active hosts, what services are they running, what operating systems are they running, potentially do they have things like the guest account enabled. All of that feeds into the prioritization of what to attack, and certainly in which order. Beyond starting with a big picture, which I kind of explained, it's a really important component, Certainly, starting with a big survey helps you ensure that you're on the right network. Well, if you're not on the right network, if you're not connected to the right place, if you've spliced into an Ethernet wire or associated with a wireless access point, but you're actually not on the correct segment, or you're not in the right part of the company and there's some isolation going on, well, you're going to spend an awful lot of time potentially hacking a host if you just randomly pick a host or randomly start picking IP addresses to attack for nothing because you're not actually on the right network. You're not probably seeing the stuff that you want to attack. And randomly picking IP addresses or machine names is absolutely the worst thing you can do. You're going to waste a ton of time, ton of energy, and it's going to be pretty much a pointless effort. So for example, I've seen some folks that literally associate, get a DHCP address from either a, a DHCP server or for an a, from an access point, and they just start attacking IP addresses above and below them. That's just silly. There's no, no sense in that. Spending tons of time and effort for little to no reward. And it allows you to actually bring your strength against weakness early. So what this means really is starting with a big survey and looking around lets you bring your strength of knowledge of hacking and, and vulnerabilities and which systems you want to go against, against weaknesses because you're identifying those weaknesses. And sometimes, well, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you find an unpatched system, you find an old operating system, you find a domain controller that maybe shouldn't be still online because it's got an old name, you find a user misconfiguration, a user that installed FTP services or web services with the default configuration. You, uh, you find an unauthorized host where you're starting to map out the network and you find very consistent host names except for one or except for two. These are great things. You, f you get these and you get lucky and you know that you can actually exploit weaknesses in these or the weaknesses are more likely to be on these kinds of systems with older operating systems, potentially lower patch levels, unauthorized so they may not get patches from the network itself, that kind of thing. So looking around lets you identify those, footprint those early, and potentially, if they are of interest, there may be easier and harder ones, and you can identify those quickly and start attacking them. So early on in an active assessment, the first thing you're going to want to do is find responsive systems. So what systems are powered on? What systems are responding on the network? Uh, essentially, if you think of it as pinging every system on a network, which systems are responding. Then for the systems that you can get a response for, you want to check for things like common services like FTP and Telnet or port 80 open indicating a web server. 
uh, some Microsoft specific ports indicating a Microsoft operating system. Different types of attributes, different types of ports or different types of services that get response. All of this feeds into this data that you're gathering about the network, about the host on the network and the network itself. Importantly, at this step, when you start to look for all responsive systems and then choose responsive systems and examine them a little closer, this needs to be done with little to no detection. Can't set off alarms, bells and whistles and so forth. Some older tools, for example, Nmap is a really, really common attack tool in this space. By default, Nmap simply crawls an entire IP address range from lowest value to highest value in sequence with pings. That's called a ping sweep. And ping sweeps set off every intrusion detection system, every firewall that they can find if there are internal firewalls and intrusion detection systems. So if there are those devices in the internal network that this packet gets to, those will get set off. Luckily, there's two things that are helping prevent that from happening. First, you are getting trained and you know not to set off those alarms because you know the proper tools and techniques and you will know a little bit more in a moment. And most companies don't wind up deploying internal firewalls and intrusion detection systems within the boundary. So once you're within this boundary, these ping sweeps, as long as they're done pretty carefully, they generally speaking won't set off all kinds of alarms or bells or whistles. You won't have administrators coming down on your head. All of this information, the responsive systems themselves, as well as the information about the responsive system, all feed into this concept that I like to call a nefarious network map. 